Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the MSI Radeon R7 240 2GB DDR3 AMD graphics card. This one can be considered as a fairly cheap one, but how does it perform? Before I move on, I'd like to thank Forticus, an amazing computer store and online shop for providing me this product. The box, once again, we're looking at the MSI R7 240 AMD graphics card with 2GB of DDR3 video memory. MSI also includes low profile brackets for slim and small systems. On the back of the box there's mainly information on the MSI afterburner software and the used components. Inside the box is the graphics card right on top and an anti-static bag. These are low profile brackets I was talking about, very nice of MSI to include that. Underneath is the quick users guide and old city driver CD. However, I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from AMD's website in order to get the best performance out of the card. Here's the R7 240. As you can see, MSI uses a nice plastic shroud that covers the card. It really surprises me to see a shroud on such a graphics card that is pretty much low profile. However, I really like it. This small fan will blow air onto the blue colored aluminum heatsink. But to be honest, I am always a bit skeptical when it comes to small fans, because they are often quite noisy. Obviously, the shroud pretty much includes the whole card, and that definitely makes a more expensive impression, at least to me. MSI uses a very nice black PCB that we enthusiasts love to see so much, but I doubt an enthusiast will go for such a graphics card. This is a single slot card by the way, and as for the outputs, there's one DVI, one HDMI, and one VGA output. So in my opinion, if aesthetics really matter when it comes to such a price point, this MSI R7240 looks really good thanks to the enclosing shroud. On to the specifications. The MSI Radeon R7240 offers 2GB of DDR3 video memory and uses the OLED Pro GPU. Its core clock is at 730 MHz, its boost clock at 780 MHz and its memory clock at 900 MHz. The TDP would be 50 watts and the 28nm architecture is used. DirectX 11.2, OpenGL 4.3 as well as the new Mantle API supported. The bus width is 128 bit which is quite high actually compared to cards we've seen in the past. In GPU-Z you can see all the specs again. At the time of this video, I'm of course using the latest drivers from AMD, which are beta drivers for now. With the help of the active cooling, you should be able to squeeze out more performance out of this card by overclocking it. The temperature shouldn't be very high, but we'll see that now in the benchmarks.
right, as you saw yourself, the MSI R7 240 definitely is not a bad card. However, it's not really suitable for gaming, but it indeed is possible if you lower the settings and depending on the game, also the screen resolution. Right away I have to apologize for not including more graphics cards to compare in the charts. The thing is, I changed the way I benchmark. I now benchmark with specific medium settings that also apply to iGPUs, so I can easier compare entry level and mainstream cards. Back then, when I tested the GT640, HD 7750 and so on, I ran the benchmarks at a different resolution and of course also different settings. Of course I could just rerun the benchmarks with my new benchmarking settings, but as you all know, I have to buy most components with my own money and therefore sell it after I'm done with reviewing, or I borrow the components and have to give them back. Therefore it's impossible for me to rerun the benchmarks, I hope you understand. The more graphics cards I review with the new benchmarking settings, the more you will have to compare in my charts in the future. I hope you understand, it's not always easy when you don't really own the hardware. But let's not get off topic. The R7 240 in terms of performance lies somewhere in between the Nvidia GT 630 and 640. Or when comparing against AMD cards in between the AMD HD 6670 DDR3 and HD 6670 GDDR5 version. While the price is quite low for the R7 240, it doesn't have a very good price performance ratio because the R7 250 performs a lot better and can indeed be used for gaming already but costs only a little more. I can tell you it's definitely worth it to pay a little extra for the R7 250. The temperatures are very low thanks to the small fan that keeps blowing cool air onto the heatsink but the fan actually can be heard in the system. It's not really loud, but it indeed is noticeable. I can't really say that much about the power consumption. It's a little high for the offered performance, but it's okay. MSI, however, really impresses me when it comes to their design. I really like the plastic shroud that encloses the whole card. However, the price performance ratio isn't that good on this graphics card. Pros are good cooler, low temperatures, and the card is good looking in terms of the aesthetics. Cons are not the best price performance ratio and the cooling fan can be noisy. Therefore I give this MSI Radeon R7 240 2GB DDR3 graphics card a 6 out of 10 but still would recommend it. Once again thanks to Fortacus for providing me this graphics card. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.